Hi, folks. Welcome to uh, Cracking the Restaurant Labor Crunch. Uh, I'm Jamie Oikel from RunningRestaurants.com. I want to thank our uh, diamond sponsor, Performance Food Service. And joining me today is Taraj Barman, who is the CEO of Up and Go. Uh, how are you, man? Oh, doing great, Jamie. How are you today? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. It's good. We, we, we interviewed, I don't know, a uh, podcast a couple months ago. It was great to have you on. So I wanted to bring you back for this specific topic, because as you know, every restaurant in the country has experienced a weird labor situation, right? It's just, just funky out there, finding people, keeping people, motivating them. So we'll get into what you guys do. But before that, what are you just seeing as a CEO of a company that has a lot of restaurant clients? What are you seeing as a customer out there as it relates to finding people in, in restaurants, experiencing stuff as a, uh, as, just a, as a customer when you go out? What do you think? What's it look like? Well, yeah, as you said, I mean, one of the nice things about having, you know, literally hundreds of uh, restaurant clients is that we're always on the phone with them and he, we hear what their issues are. Um, and I would say pretty much everyone you get on the phone has the same problem. They always say, we have half the staff we need. You know, half my dining room is empty. People come in, they ask, hey, why can't I sit in those chairs? And, you know, they're trying to figure out how they can solve this problem. Yeah. It, well, I talked with an operator the other day about that exact issue of being frustrated that the business is sitting there at your door, right? Like they're mm -hmm. literally standing at your door, looking in and seeing empty seats go and they get frustrated, right? Because why can't I sit down, right? I, I'm used to coming into a restaurant. If I see an open table, I get to sit down, I get to give you my money and restaurants are feeling that frustration and not being able to, to seat diners. So it's a very, very, very frustrating experience. Are they sharing anything that's working for them? Uh, whether it's getting staff, keeping staff, uh, in efficiencies with the operation, what are they telling you? Well, you know, I look at everything through the lens of technology. And I think one thing that a lot of restaurateurs are, are looking for now is ways to run their business with less staff, you know, mm. as opposed to necessarily trying to get more staff. And I personally think that this crisis is is temporary. I mean, everything human is temporary. So and, and I've already started to hear in some cases that um, people are, are getting more applications and, and able to attract staff again. But I think restaurants are, some of them are kind of jumping to this reaction of, hey, if I can't get servers, I want um, I want to automate them. So they're looking at, you know, order at the table mm -hmm. um, as a solution. But we've done a lot of surveying with people who pay with Up and Go, because we literally have, you know, millions of people who pay with Up and Go. And I asked that, you know, I asked them, I'm like, hey, do you want to order at the table? Two thirds, a full two thirds of guests do not want to order their own food at a table. and Moreover, 35% of guests who have to order at a table say they won't go back to that restaurant because people go to restaurants to get served, you know, especially like the, the majority of our clients are fine dining. People are used to going, they want to sit down at a table, have someone come and, you know, take their order. Um, and so they don't want to place their order, you know, and a, a lot of frustration too. Like I've talked to some restaurants who I was just talking to actually a resort that implemented order at the table and they, they did it at, at, at uh, like a dining environment on the beach. And they said, there are just so many problems because people order food. First of all, they can't customize what they want. You know, everyone mm -hmm. wants to modify something. And yes, these solutions have ability to modify, but I don't know, people are having trouble with it. And then also bringing the food out, everyone's confused. Like, where do I take this food? You know, where do I take that food? Um, even in a restaurant, you know, people, people switch tables. I was just talking, I was talking to actually one of our clients, a restaurant owner with a number of restaurants uh, Friday, and he's going to different restaurants that have different solutions. He, he went to one, scanned the QR code on the table, and there was literally a, a full amount, of, like, like the entire order was sitting there from a previous group. And he talked to the server and the server said, yeah, they couldn't figure out how to pay. So we re-rang them up and we paid here. And then they could, but then they couldn't figure out how to like get the stuff off the check for that table. So then they couldn't actually order with their own phones. So I don't think oh, it's, you know, I think restaurants are like to, to some degree kind of thinking, I think they're sort of falling maybe a little bit in a trap where they're thinking less about what do my guests, what do my guests want? And they're just, they're so challenged by this labor crunch that they're thinking more about how do I solve my problem? And I think that's, that's got to change, right? Because if you, are trying to solve your own problem at the expense of reducing the quality of experience for your guests, then pretty soon that's going to become your second problem, right? You know, people are not going to come back. I mean, I know I've, I've gone to a, a number of these setups and I don't like ordering by phone. You know, it's just, it's not pleasant, you know? 
A couple of things to hit on there because you touched on a lot and it's good to hear the feedback that the restaurants are giving you and the customers. And I, I know this summer I traveled quite a bit. I came across a lot of QR codes to scan, to start the process, just to view the menu. But I, I don't think I did any where I had to completely order on, on the phone. Uh, and I can see some some disconnect there. I, it, is, it is really about the experience. We go out to, to eat, to get taken care of. Uh, and so forth. And I can see environments where doing it completely on a kiosk and so forth can make sense. But uh, yeah, you want to, as a customer, you want to make sure that order is right. So like, even though I can make exceptions on a screen, like sometimes I got to tell them this weird funky thing that I know they write down and they tell the person a certain way. Uh, so, so you get, you get nervous. That those things won't happen. And it, and I was just at a conference the other day and the keynote speaker was talking about that customer experience, right? That's what people are looking for. You know, what does it feel like? Not just the transaction part, but what 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 do they leave with? What can they uh, relate to folks uh, outside of what they just had that will make other people want to come? And and so you want to, whether it's through technology, whether it's a robot in the future or some sort of some sort of new technology, does make it better. But it's something that is a positive thing that people are going to talk about. Uh, that makes them want to come back, obviously, because that's that's our goal. The, the, I wrote down the numbers you talked about, but you you throw out a number about thirty five percent of people that do order the table don't want to come back. I thought that was um, a really fascinating one to to share. What about uh, you guys? Your your tech, you know. Uh, Obviously, I, I I've, I've used whether it's yours or a similar one at the at the checkout process, and I appreciate that. It speeds me up. What are you seeing as a benefit of that? What else are you seeing as a benefit of what you guys do in terms of helping operators kind of be more smooth? Well, fortunately, paying at the table is something I think people are more excited about. Um, our, one of our other survey questions was, "Did you enjoy paying with Up and Go on your own phone?" And I'll be honest, 97, I was a little surprised, but 97% of the people said they did. So that's really mm -hmm. high. So people do like to take, I think when it's time to pay, that's when they like to take the situation into their own hands because that's a, a control, yep. people have control, right? So they can take control and then they can own their time and they can go on to the next thing. And that saves five, 10, 15, 20 minutes for the restaurant. Basically a restaurant is effectively getting more capacity in their restaurant when people are getting out sooner. And I just want to say, like, I'm I'm really glad that you brought up uh, guest experience. And this is always a tricky one to me, you know, when I'm like talking to a restaurant or trying to sell the benefits, because um, I think when you're <clears throat> I think when you're trying to evaluate options or, you you know, you want to do financial analysis around something like you try to look at things that have metrics. Right. So you can have a metric around, oh, did tips go up or, you know, did we see, did we, sorry, about, did we see more people in the same amount of time or what's the revenue or how many covers did we have? But guest experience is probably one of the most important things, right? Because literally people come to your restaurant. Yeah. They come for the food, but that's all part of the experience. You know, it's, um, it's a show, it's a show. And so if people have a bad experience, you know, they're less likely to come back. But the question is, it's it's very touchy feely. Like you can't put a number on guest experience. You can't say, oh, their guest experience was 37.2, right? Or 93.7. So that's just one of those things that you've really got to kind of come out of your mathematics and think about it from a human perspective and realize that that value um, that it has. And that's a really big part of dining out. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It is, and I, I want to echo the 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 part of what, what you guys do, and I I do appreciate. I'd be in that ninety seven percent where I do when it's time to go. Like I want to pay, I want to go. I, I had, the tech is now available to do it. In fact, I was sitting down, I had dinner with someone who uh, who's from out of the country, and he still says, you know, where he where he's from, it's it's very atypical to take that credit card and go do it what restaurants normally do, and there's still still that that fear where does the credit card go and they could scan that thing 17 times on the way to, to and from the restaurant and of course i know that that's doesn't really happen that much but that that thing is in the back of our head versus uh pay go hit it kids are like when can we go when can we go when can we go uh that that's what i feel mostly the time they're like can we leave yet but um that aspect of it is 100 i want to ask you about uh, what you're seeing in your marketplace about attracting staff, about keeping staff. Have you seen uh, creative advertisement, creative uh, promotions, incentives, whether it's just clients or a story you have? Have you seen anybody do something that's kind of neat? Well, I know that restaurants are, you know, throwing out all the stops. I drove by my local McDonald's and I saw a big banner outside that said they're paying $18 an hour 
which um, <laughs> seem really high to me, you know, uh, for McDonald's. So, you know, there, there's, there's obviously paying more. Um, and I guess, I, you know, I, I, I guess that's all. I haven't heard of too many tricks, you know, beyond just trying to find the right talent, you know, that's going to fit in uh, with your, with your restaurant and the culture of people who are working there. I did see not whether well, it was just a graphic. I didn't see it personally, but it was something similar. It was a fast food place that was something, it was up, I think $21 per hour. So the, the what what's happening now with this, why we're making the show and doing these episodes and trying to talk to operators and, and industry insiders is it, we've never seen the, the pressures of uh, salary so intense and that changes the whole uh, economics of the business. Right. I mean, when you, instead of paying minimum wage, now we're like two to two to three times that for some of our staff, if we can find them. So it's dramatically changing that, which cre creates the opportunity to, or the need to be more efficient, uh, to get more people in. So it really changes the whole dynamic. And so I think, and I agree with you that things are going to settle, uh, but when they settle, it's going to be completely different than it was uh, three years ago would be, would be my opinion. COVID is going to force a lot of lessons. It's going to force a lot of different ways of op operating and so forth. So I, I think, I think that's definitely the case. Any other trends, uh, tips, thoughts you want to share, uh, as, as we talk about this? Well, I, I will just share a couple more stat statistics from this survey, which I think are really interesting. Um, one of them is that uh, that experience can really impact return visits. So like we found that people who can pay by phone said that they're two thirds more likely to come back to the restaurant, mm. um, which I guess <laughs> would be sort of a problem, right? Maybe if you don't have enough staff, you don't want more people coming back to the restaurant. But, you know, I think in the long run, um, that, that's definitely. They do. They do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, how did you conduct that? That was that was off people who use the uh, use the app, and you're able to like ping them and ask a few questions. Yeah. Well, if people get their email receipt, they can opt in to receive email from us, and so we just took a recent batch of those people and several thousand and sent them a survey. Okay. Uh, as 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 we start to wrap, uh, you want to send people to your website. What else are you guys doing? You have any uh, reports on the site? Are you doing anything on on social? What's going on? Yeah, you know, we're not as active on social as, as I would like, We, um, but we're very open. We're very accessible. If people come to upandgo.com, if they fill out a contact form, you know, we love talking to people, um, a lot of hands-on attention. So happy to have a discussion with, you know, anybody in the industry. Perfect. Awesome. All right, Taraj, thank you so much for joining me. It's Jamie Oikel with runningrestaurants.com, uh, joined by Taraj Barman, CEO of upandgo.com. I want to take a second and thank our uh, diamond sponsor, Performance Food Service, and they are at performancefoodservice.com for being part of our show. We'll see you soon. Uh, thanks, Taraj. Thanks, Jamie. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.